Candyman Special. <laughs> Hey everybody, Josh RV Nerd here at Halo RV of Coldwater, Michigan. Gonna kind of give you a little bit of a two-in-one video today. We're gonna be uh, looking at this trailer, which is for sale, available here at Halo RV. It's being uh, sold, represented as is, where is, how is. The way that it is is the way that you get it. But um, I also, on the way, I want to use this as an opportunity to show you what to look for on some of these classic uh, hybrid ultralight type campers. Now, ultralight construction has really drastically improved uh, in recent years. Um, when it first came out, like this thing only weighs 3,735 pounds. It was, it's insanely lightweight. Unfortunately, it was able to achieve that weight because it was effectively structurally deficient in some ways. But when it was first built, those uh, shortcomings basically hadn't yet had time to present themselves. Just over time, things wore out and worked down uh, a little bit more quickly than anyone intended. So as we go through this, I'm gonna show you kind of what this trailer is, but also the areas to look for, whether it's this trailer or any other like classic, especially hybrid camper, because for whatever reason, I don't know exactly what it is. These classic hybrids seem to have certain things that I've learned to look for over the years. <laughs> our, our sales manager goes, hey Josh, you'll never guess this. I said, let me guess, you got A, B, C, D, E. He goes. Have you looked at the trailer? I said, no, I'm just an experienced idiot and I've done this for a while. Now, a lot of these things I'm showing you here today, they're not things that are always readily obvious to someone who's never done this before. And they're things that, like when I went through and I took the pictures, the still photos of this RV, because again, it is for sale. I looked at it and said, these pictures don't accurately represent this camper because, uh, I, what I'm theorizing here is that this RV has been, at least at some point, in the possession of like a f fix it and flip it kind of person. And uh, I, I don't want to say that, I don't want that to be deemed as derogatory because there, I mean, sometimes you fix things and then you resell them. There's nothing wrong with people to have cars, with houses, etc. But I, th the goal is to make it look okay, to make it function, but maybe not to be perfect. And that's what I feel like this RV has gone through. What I will tell you is that this entire floor has been fairly compromised at some point. Something that doesn't show up on camera is that when I walk around this, there's soft spots all over the floor. Um, a lot of that is due to the fact that these older style ultralights did not have enough cross members in the floor. But then I start looking at stuff like this. I start looking at the fact that the flooring isn't an exact match for everything else in here. And there's all this trim work around the base. That's not normal from an RV manufacturer. Then you investigate a little further and you can actually get an interesting little cross section right here. That right there is the original flooring. What we're looking at right here is uh, some folks basically went through and put OSB decking all over uh, the, the floor to help disperse your weight so that you wouldn't fall through bad spots. And then they put a pretty kind of click plank floor covering on top of it. There's nothing necessarily wrong with that. Frankly, it is a inexpensive way of keeping the floor functional, albeit not perfect, but functional. So what you need to understand is this floor isn't gonna get any better. And the only way to really fix the floor is to literally take the body of the camper off and like reinstall a new floor, which you're not gonna do on something like this. It would cost too much, it's super cost prohibitive. Um, I've also noticed there are spots in here where like the walls, look like they were hyper scrubbed which makes me think maybe they're I, I, I don't know i don't know why they might have needed to but like there's little spots like that that look like somebody really went through and did a number trying to make sure that this thing um at least looked the part um uh, i'll also look at things like this over here like this this refrigerator that is not the original factory fridge uh it, this thing probably would have originally had a gas electric two-way let me check something looks like it these hinges are all reversible by the way that is wow that is basically a brand new fridge what i'm looking for i was hoping to find a tag that would tell me if this was 110 or 12 volt i don't see anything that tells me either way it makes me think this is probably a household residential power only fridge which means it's probably not going to operate in transit uh, i could be wrong on that that might be a 12 volt but you know you you want to start making sure that like all of the appliances are in working order. It's not unreasonable to request demonstrations of these kind of things. Uh, the uh, cabinetry overall doesn't look too terrible. 
Um, oh, let me back up. I'm sorry. One thing I did notice here, though, uh, is that up here in this corner, she's got a little wrinkle in time. We'll come back to that in just a second. I want to kind of finish up everything else in our living area. Actually, I'm just going to back up. We're going to just keep doing this in real time. Um, the uh, I'm going to I'm going to lay down, and you're going to look straight up just so that you know what's happening with the camera, and you don't get motion sick. You see the funny color splotching on this? We're going to touch more on this when we get outside. But it means that this canvas end has been left wet for an extended period of time and probably not been able to air out properly. And I will tell you, if you're looking at an RV like this and you have some kind of mold sensitivity or allergy, this is not the camper for you. I noticed the original uh, tabletop is here, but the table base has been swapped out. I actually don't dislike that. I like the free floating aspect of it, but I think it's because they covered up uh, what would have been the original floor mounts here with the new flooring. Now you look at this wall over here and you can see how that's obviously had water damage and been compromised. So there's been some water probably down through that window right there. And I suspect, remember I said some of these walls have been scrubbed on. I suspect that there were some, uh, I call it like RV acne, little braille bumps. Those are actually tiny mold spores in the walls. It makes me think that maybe some of that was here and it had to, uh, somebody really worked on it to kind of remove the impression of it as it were. Although I do see all the owner's manuals, which is actually something I count as a positive find in an RV. Although uh, I don't consider it uh, a rule. If you find the owner's manuals, you're guaranteed to have a nice camper. It's an indicator. And obviously there's some other indicators going on uh, in here. Now, uh, I mentioned there's that uh, wrinkly spot in the ceiling up there. And you might notice we've also got ourselves some discoloration up here. That's a surefire sign that there's been some water in there. And uh, you don't need to be Bill Nye the Science Guy to recognize that something bad went it happening up here. So there's been an obvious leak around that skylight. One other thing to kind of consider is, well, it's less obvious right now. Let me back up to a good spot. This is a laminated roof. So... You see how this is now moving under my hand? It's not supposed to do that. It means that there's been water all over up in this area. It looks like these fixtures have leaked and you're going to see where that's been resealed when we get up on the roof. Um, the uh, bathroom, I guess, otherwise, actually doesn't look terrible. But those skylights up there, because uh, skylights are a common failure point, um, because the, uh, the heat from this tends to break down the seals and everything around it a little more quickly, uh, uh, I guess is kind of what's happening right there. Closing that door. Once again, all the bed ends don't look fantastic, but the mattresses don't look terrible, you know? I'm funny about sleeping on a used mattress myself, but hybrids are tricky because you can't just find a folding seamed bendy bed, uh, you know, at Home Depot every day of the week. And, and I, I think it kind of stands to reason that one of the first things you should ever look at on an RV is the roof. Try to try to look at it from the top down if you can. The trick is on something like this where there's no ladder, it's kind of a, a difficult prospect. And going right along with my theory that this was uh, at least briefly owned by a fix-it and flipper, you see where the seals around that uh, bathroom skylight, which obviously had had a leak, were very heavily addressed. They were clean, they were resealed, they did the things they need to do. You look at the rest of this though, and uh, I mean, you don't gotta be a rocket scientist to see that the rest of it's gonna need some work very soon. Now I'm gonna zoom you in, so if you're motion sensitive, you might wanna close your eyes briefly. All right, so taking a look at these seals. Now there's no ladder on the RV, so I can't get to, I'm actually standing on top of a fifth wheel next to it. I wanted to make sure I got you up here. But you can see how everything up here has been weather spotted, it means that there's been nobody on this RV cleaning it any time recently. Now, cleaning it itself doesn't necessarily enhance the lifespan of the roof. Like I get that all these little moldy spots, these algae spots don't look fantastic, but if they keep the roof clean, that means that they tend to also keep the roof conditioned, which is kind of like applying RV sunscreen. I'm gonna uh, zoom you back out now. And we're done. So. My, my message here is even if you have to get like a step ladder and, and just kind of eyeball it from the side, not even climb around it, it's a really good idea to get up there and, and take a look at everything. What I'm seeing here is that the seals that haven't been recently replaced, frankly, probably really should be uh, soon replaced. Now back down at ground level on a hybrid, 
Uh, one of the things I really like to do is uh, I'll, I'll definitely start checking out the, uh, we call it canvas, it's not canvas, but the bed ends. I like to see, you know, are they clean? Are they spotted? Does it look like the roof of this camper? Because uh, what that means is a couple things, but uh, essentially this was either put away, like it rained and then somebody put the bed ends away and just, you know, didn't air it out because with a hybrid, if you store it with wet bed ends, you need to make sure you air those things out. Or it was just left open all of the time. And uh, those spots that we're seeing, it's actually algae that grows on those surfaces. Uh, and, you know, it, it means the RV was used a lot or it was just left open and somewhat potentially neglected. Now, you see how this is all banged up. That means people have run a lot of stuff in and out of here, which it's a used RV. I mean, that, that kind of stuff happens. But I don't even know, hold on, the camera work's gonna get a little funky. There we go. If I get you vertically right down in here, you see how the flooring doesn't actually go all the way to the sidewall. And if I, I peel that up, this is all, actually it's still even wet to the touch. It's kind of all rotten in there. Now, if I back you up a little bit, something I noticed on this is all four corners have these little support wood chunks bolted to it because what was happening here is the, uh, the chassis wasn't full width, which was one of the weight saving measures that proved to be part of the RV's kind of undoing over time. The, the chassis beams kind of run down the middle two thirds of the trailer, but the actual sidewalls of the trailer have nothing directly under them to uh, support the walls. What that ends up meaning, I like that replacement uh, top on that step right there, that's very sharp. And the folks did add a handy little, that little magic screen here. Gosh, I love those, those are cool. Anyway, but the walls basically started to sag down below the floor line over time, which compromised the floor. And what happens then, once that compromise happens, there's an open seam where water can start working its way in, whether it washes down the sidewalls and wicks into the floor, or uh, if you're going down the road, there's road spray, which can then start wicking into the floor. And unfortunately, that's happened in multiple areas of the RV. And another indication of that is uh, if you get up close on this camper, you'll actually see lots of different spots of like little wavy skin. Um, that is delamination. Now there's different ways to have delam. De uh, it One of the, the most common and, and the most obvious association is, oh, it had a leak and it caused the walls to start kind of like peeling apart and that can be one of the causes for delamination but one of the other causes for it can literally just be stress like if if you take something uh, that's all kind of pressed together and then you start uh, twisting it real hard you're going to have some wrinkle spots like this is a good example of it I was trying to find a good spot where you could see it in the lighting there you go you see that funky little crease kind of at, there you go a little bit of a 45 degree angle that is from stress right there. Like there may not have actually been any water in that area of the wall, but because this thing has unfortunately been twisted like a shoebox, there's areas where the skin and the, uh, the, the skeletal structure below it have kind of come apart a little bit. Another thing to look at here is the decals because they actually tell a little bit of a story to us as well. Uh, you see how there's this like funky shadowing around it. That's the size the sticker used to be. This RV has been left out in the sun a lot and those stickers like shrink and shrivel up a little bit when they get exposed to a lot of sun like that. And sometimes they don't hold their shape and they peel up on the corners and that's where you get some of the flaking that's on here. Now I suspect this was once much worse, but again, going along with my theory that this RV was uh, in the possession of a fix it and flip it person, which again, no, no, nothing bad against them. I have no idea how they represented it. There's nothing wrong with fixing something and flipping it. People do it with real estate all the time, but they probably went through and just cleaned off the worst of that so that it looked okay without going a uh, whole hog on everything. Now, something people don't pay enough attention to in the used market is the tires. And one of the things you uh, wanna look for here is not just do you see irregular wear patterns, which would indicate um, things like misaligned axles, a bad axle, or uh, potentially overloading of the axles. You also wanna look for like dry cracking and weather spots, and then see if you can find the tire's birthday. And the way that you're going to do that is actually with uh, a DOT code. Like, let me see if I can spot it right here. Okay, so this tire's birthday, the, the last four digits after the DOT code will tell you it's birthday, 02 of 19. 
So these tires were put on here the second week of 2019. Um, that means that those tires are, a, what, about three and a half years old, which is uh, uh, not bad, actually. And again, it goes along with my theory that this was in the possession of a fix-it-and-flip-it type person. Like, this RV was probably on its last leg. Somebody got a hold of it. They applied a handful of inexpensive fixes to it, knowing that it wasn't going to make it perfect, but to get it back into functional shape. So, uh, the, the tires, though, after about three years, you do really want to start monitoring those things to make sure that they don't start breaking down. But by default, finding newer tires like that are good. If you find something that's five years or older, it's pretty much advisable to swap them out, but that is a little personal thing. I'll tell you, you find tires that are 10 years old or don't have a DOT code, those you want to swap out. So, if you're still with us at this point, it means that either uh, you appreciate learning something or for the right money, you might be interested in taking this trailer home or you're just kind of curious to see what kind of goofball things I might, uh, you know, roll out of my mouth here, all of which are fair. Um, <laughs> Uh, if you appreciate the educational type aspect of this video today, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Maybe let us know thanks or any other questions you might have. Um, short of that, if you haven't done so, hit that subscribe button. And if it looks like the right one for you, give us a call. We'll get you camping. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Halo camping, everyone.